Hello again. This worksheet is entitled, Did You Hear About? Now we are going to work on finding the missing length of right triangles. So write the word next to each correct amount in the box that contains the exercise numbers. Some answers are rounded. Whenever you need to find a missing length of a right triangle, you have to use the Pythagorean theorem. Very important stuff. So let's go ahead and write the theorem down. Now let's put it right here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right. So we're going to use that. Now remember, how do you figure out which side is C? Because that is the most important side. A and B don't really matter because they're on the same side of the equal sign. Now we know that the commutative property of addition says you can have the B number here and the A number here and you would still get the same answer. So C, since it's by itself, is the most important side to figure out. And C will always be the hypotenuse, right? The longest side possible. So we come over to any of your right triangles and remember this square right here, right? This square, that's what shows you what a right triangle is. Now we'll talk about number eight because I gotta be honest, I'm not seeing any right triangles on this one. So, or any right angles to make a right triangle. So let's come back up here. And we have our right angles. So the very first thing you do when you have a picture, so if this were a test, and you know how I always say you got to write work, you just draw this right triangle on your paper. You draw the little right angle box, and then you would take your arrow just like that. Because your arrow will always point to the hypotenuse. These guys are your legs, remember? A and B are your legs. They create the right angle. And then if you take your arrow off of that straight across, don't try and bend it, straight across, that will give you your hypotenuse, AKA your C side. And it honestly doesn't matter what you make A or B. So we can make 11A and we can make 6B. And this is a small area to work in. So if I were you, I'd get a separate piece of paper, um, lined paper, just to keep it organized and show your work, work on there. And then you can staple it together. I'll try and do mine over here for you guys. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Let's start with A. So we have 11 squared plus B is six, so six squared equals C, which in this case is X. So we're just going to write X squared. And now you take it, to get rid of all of the exponents you can, put your addition together, and then solve for X. So 11 squared, 121, and if you don't have these squares memorized, that's okay. Use your calculator. 6 squared is 36, and then we have x squared because we're not we don't know what that is so we leave it x squared 121 plus 36 you take these two together and you should get 157 and that's what equals x squared but again I don't want to know what x squared equals I want to know what x equals so if you remember how do you get rid let's try and fix this little square here because it looks kind of rough how do you get rid of this squared of something to the power to 2. Well, what's the opposite? Adding is the opposite of subtracting, multiplying and dividing, so on and so forth. What's the opposite of uh, square squares? Let's see, we have our very thin. Okay, so we're going to change our color to blue just so you can see because this is new. We don't normally do this in algebra until you get to the higher levels, but we do have to do it with the Pythagorean theorem. The opposite of squaring is the square root. 
And again, if we do it to this side, right, so we can get rid of it and just have x, we have to do it over here too. So we need to figure out, well, what's the square root of 157? Got to be honest, don't know that off the top of my head, so I'm going to take my handy dandy calculator as soon as it pops up and figure out, there we go, and figure out the square root of 157. Now for you guys, remember, that's right above your 9 key. I think it's two keys up. So 157, you hit the square root button, and I get 12.52, so on. It's irrational, right, because it keeps on going forever. So I'm going to say it's about 12.5, because the 2 doesn't do anything. So it's about 12.5. So I'm going to write that up here. And we are talking centimeters, right? So now I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say, okay, where is my 12? There's a 12, and it did say some answers around it, but that's 12 yards. I'm looking for centimeters. Ha, look right here right? 12.5 centimeters. So this goes with number one. So it says write the word next to each correct answer in the box that contains the exercise number. So what that means is one, two, three, four, five, right? They're up here. And then my answer for number one is 12.5, which is the word the. So up here, I'm going to write the word the. You see how that works? And then you can scratch it out because we've used it. We don't need it anymore. All right. Um, let's see. Let's look at number three. So we'll go back to being red here. Number three, I picked this for a reason. I hope you can tell. If I draw my arrow, right, to find C, because you always want to find that first, I actually point to a number. So I'm going to have to solve this guy differently then I solve number one. Same formula, same plug and chug, but at the end I'm going to have to move some things around. So let's go ahead. We know that 16 is going to be C, and it doesn't matter what you make A or B. So we'll make X A, and we'll make B 9. And now here's a hint I just thought about for test time. Remember, we said C has to be the biggest number. So that means A, or X in this case, has to be smaller than 16. It can be bigger or smaller than 9. That doesn't really help us, but we know it has to be smaller than 16. So let's say we have something crazy as our multiple choice answer, something like 6,000. We know that can't be right because it has to be smaller than whatever C is. So that's a test-taking strategy that you can use to maybe get rid of some answers. You know how your teachers tell you make an educated guess? Getting rid of any number bigger than C would help you take an educated guess. Okay, that was a little side note. Hopefully you guys watch this and get that. So let's move on. So in this case, I'm trying to think about where I can put this. I'll try and show it like right down in this area. So we are going to have A squared, which is going to be X squared plus b squared, which is 9 squared, equals c squared, which is 16 squared. Now I don't know a squared, so that stays. And remember, your the step is always the same, no matter where x is. You always want to get rid of your squares first. So then I have 9 squared, which is 81. And to be completely honest, I don't remember 16 squared off the top of my head, so I'm going to grab my calculator, clear this out, and I'm going to do 16 squared. Now, your x squared button is above the 8 on your calculator. So find that. You hit it, 256. Okay. So come back up here, 256. All right. So now I'm pretty much where I was over here except for a number one, because x was already by itself, I could just add and then do the square root. x is not by itself, so you can't just do a square root now. You have to get rid of anything that's on the same side as x before you do a square root. So to get rid of a plus 81, let's change our sign, or our, our color here, we're gonna subtract 81. You have to get rid of this guy, and remember, 
we have our wall here. So whatever we do to the left side, we have to do to the right side. And I know I'm running into the next problem here. Like I said, probably best if you get a separate sheet of paper to do this work on. So a positive 81 and a negative 81, those cancel out. X squared equals, I'm not going to try and do this in my head, so let's come down here to the calculator. Clear that out. 256 minus 81 equals 175. Okay. So I have 175. Now, I have x squared by itself. These numbers are all together. Now you can do your square root, okay? But you must make sure that it's x squared is by itself and you've combined the other side as you can. So we're going to square root him, get rid of the x squared part. Now we just have x and we're going to get rid of our, or we're going to square root this side too. So I'll come back and I already had 175 up here, hit the square root button, 13 point, and again, irrational. Any square root that's not perfect is automatically irrational. That just helps out for those other types of questions. So I'm going to say about 13.2, because again, that 2 is not going to do anything. So my answer is going to be 13.2, and remember we're doing this problem up here, we're talking inches. So 13.2 inches. And now I'm going to come look over here. I have inches, but it's not the right number. Here we go, 13.2 inches right here. So again, the directions were, we look at the number we're working on. We find the word that goes with our answer, 13.2 in this case, and we write that word up here. So the third word, remember we skipped number two, the third word is student. So we can write student up here. There we go. Almost got it. Pat out. What do you know? All right. The blank student. Interesting start. So um, I'm going to clear this out. And we're going to, well, let's look at 8 while we're doing all this. Now, I told you at the beginning that 8 is a little funky because it doesn't have a right angle. Ladies and gentlemen, unless they tell you this angle is a right angle in words, or they actually give you the box, right? They put it there. You may not draw a box just so you can have it. That will screw up everything. It has to either tell you it's a right angle or give you the picture. It has to, it's a law. They can't mess that, they can't mess with you like that. That can't be a trick question. So if you look, right here in these directions. See how it says if possible? That's their tricky way of saying, guess what? You can't do this one. There's no way to figure this guy out given the information you have. Now, if they said this was an equilateral triangle, then you'd know that'd be 40. Or if they, you know, some other piece of information, we might be able to figure it out. But this, as it is, is not possible. Not possible. Sorry guys. Don't try and add a right angle where there is none. Unless they tell you it's, you know, I mean some of the pictures down here it's a rectangle so we know they have right angles and we'll get to that. But if they don't give you one, don't try and create one. So I'm going to scroll here for a second and it's going to mess it up just a little bit. But if you come all the way down to the bottom right here, I know all this is messed up, but if you come down here, look, not possible, not possible. So number eight is going to be not possible, which is the word city. So if we go back up here where I was, there we go. Remember I said this was not possible. So number eight is gonna be the word city. All right, there, I gave you some freebie answers. I'm gonna do one of the word problems. I'm not gonna solve it because we've solved and I think you guys have that, but I will tell you how to set it up just because word problems are a little bit more complicated and you have to read it and understand the words. So now I'm going to clear this bad boy out and let's come down here and look at some of our word problems. Okay, so 
Um, just number 10, we'll start with number 10. Mr. Smog, interesting name, just bought a big screen TV set. The screen is 48 inches wide and 27 inches high. Find the length of its diagonal. Now remember, diagonal is corner to corner, so they're talking about this piece right here. That's what we need to find. So, highlighting some important information here. Uh, we need to know that it's 48 inches wide and 27 inches high, and we need to find the diagonal. Okay, that's what we need to find. So, if we come over here, we can say, okay, wide is 48 inches, so our width is 48. Our height is 27. And our diagonal is unknown, that's our X. Because it's a TV, they have right angles, so you may, in this case, draw your right angle right there. From here, you would draw your arrow. That's your C, which means you can make this A or B, again, doesn't matter. And you can solve it from there, finding C. I'm not going to solve it for you. You guys can do that on your own. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, this one talks about the ladder leaned against the wall. We've done a lot of those, so I think you're good. How high up will the ladder reach? Remember, if it's if the ladder is leaning, that's your diagonal is when it's leaned. So this is going to be your C. Um, walking west and then north. So just, again, right, never eat soggy waffles. West, you're going to start and go that way. And then north. You're going to start wherever you stopped, and you're going to go up. So each block is 500 feet long. How far is Hulk from his home? So if each block is 500 and it's eight blocks, actually, you know what? I'm going to draw this a little bit here. I'll put it over here because it, you got to do a little bit of multiplying here. So if I go west, right, that's horizontal. If I go west eight blocks and each block is 500 feet, it's going to be 8 times 500. 8 times 5 is 40, so it's going to be 4,000. 4, huh? It's going to be 4,000. And again, if he's walking 6 blocks north, and each block is 500, that's going to be 6 times 500. 6 times 5 is 30, so... This will be kind of hard to write sideways. Wow, look at Miss Walker. I've got talent, y'all. I'm saying. Try to write sideways with these things. It's not the easiest. All right. So that's going to be 3,000. And then they want to know how far is he from home. There's your X and your right angle. Okay? So I'm going to let you finish that. But there's that to get you started because 12 is a little bit more intense. Um, all right. Number 13, each side of an equilateral, ooh, important word, you got to know this. Each side of an equilateral triangle measures 9 centimeters. Find the height of the triangle. Excellent. Okay. So, if each side measures 9, right, because, here, let's highlight this because this is important. Equilateral. Equal, right, that little prefix there means the same. And lateral means side. So they are the same side. So fancy word for saying all the sides are the same. Now you might be tempted to say, okay, well, A, you know, here's my right angle. And this is my X, right? Because I don't know my height. So it's going to be, you know, x squared plus 9 squared equals 9 squared. Mm, you got to be careful. The whole thing is 9, but we just need part of it because we're looking for this height, which means, and I'm going to change colors here, we only want this piece right here. You guys see that? See this one triangle? That's what we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem on because the entire triangle, right, 9, 9, and 9, is not a right triangle. So we can't use 9 as our 
base height as our B. See these little lines right here? These little lines mean that these two are the same length. They took nine and broke it in half. So how do you figure out half of something? You divide it by two, right? Half of nine, you could either say, you know, one half, one over two times nine. The easier way is nine divided by two, which is actually 4.5. So that is what you want to use for your B. A is X, B is 4.5, and yes, you can switch them, but C is definitely this 9 over here. Okay? If you have trouble with 13, let a teacher know. We can walk you through this a little bit more. But if you just write down 4.5 for B, you should be fine. All right, and uh, number 13 is a two-step only for this reason. The lawn in front of Kermit Middle School is in the shape of a rectangle, 30 yards long and 16 yards wide. So it looks like this up here for number 10. How much shorter is your walk if you walk diagonally across the lawn rather than along the two sides? This is a two-step. First, you got to add your 30 plus your 16. So if you walk the two sides, it's going to be 46. And they want to know, okay, so look at the diagonal, solve that, right? So you got to solve for the hypotenuse, and then you're going to subtract. So if we take our 30 and our 16, and then it says walking the two sides. So this piece right here is 30 plus 16, which is going to give me 46. Now, I'm not going to solve the diagonal, but once you solve that, right, and you can use this picture, draw your own little rectangle, once you solve for the diagonal, you're going to say that number, whatever it is, minus 36, because in this word problem, they say how much shorter. When they ask you a question like that, that means you're going to have to find the difference. We know in math, difference means subtract. So when they ask you how much shorter or how much longer or how much taller, any question like that means your end is going to have to find the difference between the two answers. All right, that is the last one, so maybe you'll be able to figure it out based on maybe some guessing or something. But hopefully, you know, the math isn't hard. You just have to make sure you do this last step at the end to get your final answer. That's everything I have for this worksheet. If you have any questions, ask your teacher.